not a Hanafi anymore, you are me, not me, you. You see what I'm saying? Meaning your madhab is, is whatever I like. Madhabi, not madhab Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, not Shafi'i, not anyone. Madhabi, that's what I like brother, that's what I do. So we need to stop you know, fooling ourselves. Because fooling ourselves means we're trying to fool Allah. Because Allah knows everything we can seal. Fooling the people works. You know, it works. Fooling Allah, never. So even if we get by in the dunya, we will not get by on the day of judgment. So we need to stop this. Either we follow the sunnah, or we don't follow the sunnah. To put the madhab as an excuse is not an excuse. And guess what, inshallah, there will be a lecture dedicated to this whole uh, you know, uh, conflict of madhahib and how to deal with it adequately, bi'idnillahi azza wa jal. Ithen, all the madhahib are not with you. Ibn Hazm fil muhalla had mentioned the ijma'. Who remembers what the word ijma' means? Come on, we need to work on our da'wah terminology. Ijma' in English. Consensus, thank you sir. Consensus meaning the unanimous agreement of the ulama. Ibn Hazm and Ibn Taymiyyah and others mentioned they don't know of any alim at that, at that time, in the early generations, that ever said that it's okay for you to do anything to your beard. That is beyond, you know, before the grip. Not even a alim. Ijma' meaning, and by the way, FYI, what does FYI mean for your information? There are, ma there are not many things which the ulama have agreed upon. You see? Often, if you, if you buy a book of Al-Madhahib Al-Arba'a, you will hardly find them agreeing on one fiqh issue. There's always difference. For them to agree is very rare. So when they agree on something, there's really no room for anyone to go beyond that. So this is what they said. Ibn Taymiyyah added something interesting. He said, فَأَمَّا حَلْقُهَا فَمِثْلِ حَلْقِ الْمَرْأَةَ الْمَرْأَةُ رَأْسِهَا وَأَشَدْ لِأَنَّهُ مِنَ الْمُثْلَى الْمَنْهِ عَنْهَا وَهِيَ مُحَرَّمَةً He said, a man shaving his beard is equal to a woman shaving her head. Imagine if your wife came out of the bathroom one day and she was bald. Like, are you okay? So this is the new style. You didn't see? You know, blah blah singers, I don't care, you know, there was this singer back in the day, this big, you know, I, don't, I forgot her name, alhamdulillah, this was in Jahiliyyah, who used to be bald. What a strange, you know, appearance. Of course, if someone has a disease, alhamdulillah, all of the creation of Allah is good. But someone who deliberately, I mean, if a woman shaved her head, I mean, you're speechless. He said, a man shaving his beard is equal to a woman shaving her head, rather it is worse. Because it is muthla. You know what muthla means? Mutilation. You know what mutilation means? If someone died, if someone died in a battlefield, some of the enemies would get him and deliberately distort his appearance. They would cut his nose, they would cut his ears, they will make him look disturbing. So much so that when you see him, you will not be able to recognize him anymore because of the mutilation which they have done to him. The ulama considered shaving the beard as mutilation. You know how severe, meaning you are distorting yourself. And I will mention to you something inshallah, which should be part of wisdom, that will make you reconsider the actions of the Muslims today. Tayyip. Furthermore, this was the opinion of Al-Barak Fouri, Al-Qurtubi, Ibn Muflih, Ibn Al-Qayyim, I mean all of the ulama. So let me tell you something. Maybe I haven't convinced you. Okay? Maybe you still think, well, you know, there's room for me to follow because I think it's fine. Let's go to the other side of the coin. There are things called violations. When you don't obey, it's at different levels. You may disobey Allah's messenger and the consequences will be a sin. Okay? A single sin. You may disobey Allah's messenger and the consequences are what? A sin which you may do a good deed 10 minutes later and erase it, right? Sins, we said, are at different levels. You smoking at home is a sin. You smoking in public is double trouble and multiple sins because you're harming yourself, you're harming people around you, you are disobeying Allah publicly and a list, the list goes on. Let me tell you some violations that are a consequence of one playing with his face. Violation number one, it is disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Evidence, the one I quoted earlier, the hadith of the 
Magians, who the Prophet ﷺ said, my Lord commanded me. So when you play with your beard, you are disobeying Allah because Allah commanded the Muslims to let their beards grow. Violation number two, you're disobeying the Prophet ﷺ. And I quoted the verses earlier which threaten us from disobeying him ﷺ. Furthermore, Allah says, وَمَن يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ Allah." Whosoever obeys the Messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. So when you disobey the Messenger, you're again disobeying Allah. Violation number three, you are opposing the way of the Messengers and the Prophets. The hadith of Jabir in Sahih Muslim, he described the Prophet ﷺ as being kathiru sha'ri lihya. He used to have a, a, a big beard alayhi salatu wasalam. It was abundant in his hair, it covered his whole face, so much so that when he, he would lead them in salah, they will know that he's reciting from the movement of his beard from the side of his face. Big beard sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, if your beard doesn't grow that much, you're not expected to do that. We're showing you that he left it alone alayhi salatu wasalam. You're opposing him. You're opposing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and all of the messengers. In the Quran, Harun said to Musa, Yabna um, la ta'khud bi lihyati wa la bi ra'si. Oh, son of my mother, trying to be compassionate to him, do not grab me by my beard. Do not grab me by my beard and by my head. Harun in the Quran told his brother Musa, don't grab me by my beard. Lihyati. Meaning he had a what? He had a beard. Subhanallah, in the Quran, the beard is mentioned. The mutawwi'in are in the Quran. If this is the title that the people who don't have beard like to give to the people who have a beard. It's one of the funniest things in the world. You know, you go around someone who doesn't have a beard, oh, mutawwi' want the judge for the mutawwi'. Say, brother, you know, why don't you become a mutawwi' like me? I mean, why are you making this beard between me and you? I'm a mutawwi' and you are not. I mean, we have the same messenger, the same religion, the same God. If you want to call this title mutawwi', then we should both be in it together. And having a beard doesn't mean that you're mutawwi' in the ultimate sense, because you can have a beard and be busted. You can be disobeying Allah in all kinds of ways that only Allah knows about, and your beard is, you know, making it to the ground. So we don't have, want to have a misconception every time we see a bearded man, say, MashaAllah, Shaykh al-Islam. Not necessarily. Okay? But it's usually a good indication that the brother has some sort of righteousness. This is why if you go to any place in the world, and it's Salah time, and they don't have an Imam, who's the Imam? The brother with the biggest beard. It's like as if the Quran he memorized grows out on his face. Even though the Sunnah is what? The one who knows the book of, the book of Allah more. You may have a small beard and have the Quran memorized. And the brother next to you has a big beard, he doesn't know the Fatiha. <laughs> so anyways. Yeah. So you're going against the messengers. And Allah said, وَمَن يُشَاكِكِ الرَّسُولِ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ As I quoted earlier, if you oppose the messenger, after guidance has been made clear for you, and you follow the way other than the believers, and Allah warned us from both. So this is the third or fourth violation. I believe this is the third violation. Violation number four. You are imitating the kuffar. And that one is horrible. In the three narrations, one time he said, don't imitate the Magians, distinguish yourself from the Magians. And another one he said, distinguish yourself from the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book, the people of the scriptures, the Jews and the Christians. In the third narration, distinguish yourself from the Mushrikeen. All of these, we are not supposed to resemble them. These are the enemies of Allah. That's the reality. They are the enemies of Allah. And in the Fatiha, every time we read the Fatiha, we ask Allah for the path of the believers and the prophets, and we ask Allah not to give us the path of those who have attained His wrath and those who are misguided. Guess what? It is them. So what kind of contradiction is that? That means that the Fatiha is worthless. It's just lip service. We ask Allah for things that we really don't want. Because I said, there's nothing easier than the beard. So if we really want guidance from Allah, and we don't want to imitate the Jews and the Christians, then how do we go about doing that? So you find someone, you know, getting a, a, a what do you call it, a go goatier? It's like a French word. I mean, the only thing that I can think of is a goat. Goat? Goatier? And what is the goat? You know, the goat, the goat only has some, something, you know, chin that is, you know, hanging from here. So people try to uh, design themselves 
like an art piece. Which is, you know, 